Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Nick. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get access to a plus nine weapon before fighting Vord of the Boreal Valley and before reaching the second area of the game, the Undead Settlement. Uh, to preface, we're going to be utilizing a glitch to kill the Dancer early and gain access to late game areas uh, far before we should be in them. This glitch currently still functions as of patch 1.03, but as time goes on, uh, this method can still be utilized by simply defeating the Dancer normally, should the glitch be patched, albeit a good bit more painstakingly. First things first, choose your starting class of your preference. Uh, I picked Assassin due to the starting S-Doc and the Spook ability by default. Uh, you can pick any class for this, it, it doesn't matter. As far as starting gifts go, I would choose the Fire Gem to make this a tad bit easier on yourself damage-wise, or possibly the Coins to prevent long-term farming. For this run, I didn't take any starting gifts simply to show that it isn't required, but it is beneficial. After we've decked out our character, let's go ahead and proceed through the starting zone. We're going to kill our good buddy Gundir, head up to the shrine. Once you arrive at the shrine, immediately perform the tree skip as shown here to grant yourself access to an early game Estus Shard, the Crows, and a Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. Once you've nabbed all the items, the next important step is going to be to take out the Swordmaster. Now, taking out the Swordmaster is actually a really critical method to the progression of this, so it's not optional. Now, once he's wiped out and Firelink is clear of all loot, head into Lothric and start progressing through the area normally. Be sure to pick up every single guaranteed Titanite shard in the zone to ensure that you have enough to make it through the early game upgrade. Funny enough, the small shards will actually end up being the most difficult to acquire for this run. I believe by the end of it, I think I had four shards and I think that is because of one additional drop in addition to the three that are default. Um, I'm not 100% positive on that, but you should end up with about three to five, depending on if you get lucky on a couple drops going through. Ultimately, I believe you're going to need 12 exactly to be able to get to the large Titanite upgrade path, but we'll be, we'll be going into that a little bit more later. So finally, once we're near Vort's boss fog, ensure that you're embered and summon the Swordmaster found in the shown location. Run up to Emma in the cathedral, get her items, and proceed to kill her. There's no consequence for doing this, and won't hinder any further dialogue options. Emma will drop the vase into vows, so once you've acquired this, head up to the altar and summon the dancer. The swordmaster should zone into the fog and die fairly quickly, but when he's dead, quit out immediately and you'll end up at the boss fog again. Resummon the swordmaster, head into the fight, and now his hitbox is completely broken. He'll eventually bleed the dancer down thanks to his katana with the bleed effect, He's going to take a little bit of damage throughout the fight from it's either an AoE or it's from his katana swings or something, but he has Estus, so he'll heal it. And this is going to grant you access to the next area once the dancer's dead. Now, as stated before, this is definitely doable without the glitch, but it's just more difficult to defeat the dancer at low soul level. And in my opinion, if you're really going to attempt that, it's normally not worth it. And once the dancer's dead, head up the ladder by placing the basin at the altar. Head left and run past the knight guarding the doorway and proceed into the elevator. Now, this zone's pretty nasty, as are the next few areas, so don't really bother fighting anything. Uh, just pick up all the loot in the zone and leave. I'll show some of the key pieces of loot you'll find in this area. I'm not going to show everything, but you will see general locations of some of them. Uh, I tried to kind of point out some of the other off-the-beaten-path ones as well, so that way, in case you miss something, you can kind of check those and see if you might have missed it there. Uh, there's some other notable loot in this area, including the ninja set, uh, but otherwise, we're here for the Titanite chunks. So once you pick this area clean, head back to the bonfire, proceed up the ladder, head straight, as opposed to left. Now this zone's a bit more tricky and will take more time to comb through to pick up all the loot. Uh, this section of the game has a ton of fantastic late game items, including the Sunlight Straight Sword, the Night Ring, and several other fantastic pieces of gear. Again, however, we're mainly here for the Titanite chunks and a few large Titanite shards. Continue progressing through the zone and picking up every single pile of loot here. After you progress far enough, Cheese kill the dragon by attacking its wing and the other one will die as well. This allows you to access the lower area for its loot. Continue progressing through the area and fighting as little as possible. Utilize your range attacks such as fire bombs to handle any of the enemies you see me kill in the video. Once you picked up all the items in the zone, you should end up with 12 Titanite chunks exactly from the left path and from the straight path, so once these two zones are done, you should have 12 total. Now be warned, you will most likely die a few times in these areas, so I personally put most of my points into vitality for the sake of this short run, but you may want to focus more on strength and dex to ensure you can actually kill enemies here. Either way will work, but it's just, it's totally up to you. Now that that's done, let's head back to the Dancer Bonfire and it's time to farm some shards. 
This whole section could honestly be skipped if you were to simply progress into the Undead Settlement after this point and pick up all the shards in that zone. However, for the sake of the video, we're going to farm them out from the Lothric Knights standing outside the Dancer's Boss Room. So once you get out there, get ready for a whole lot of this. Now this section here is mainly why I recommended the Luck Coins as a starting gift. Uh, as it can make this whole process go much faster. Without them, this can take maybe 45 minutes to an hour to get all the small shards. The larger shards don't take nearly as long, but the small shards seem to be the pain point here. So what, what I would recommend is if you don't want to farm all these out, go ahead and progress into the Undead Settlement after doing all this, and that way you can get more of the, small, the smaller Titanite shards. And that will make this whole part go a lot quicker. But if you don't want to do that and you want to just steamroll Vort, and ruin his life, then go ahead and farm him up here. Now once you've knocked out enough of the knights, you should have a total of 12 titanite shards. So once you've got those, let's head back to the Lothric Castle bonfire and farm out our large shards. These knights here will die from much of the same as their weaker counterparts down below. Just parry and backstab fish them until you've netted yourself 12 large titanite. The drop right here is a lot better and this should only take maybe about 10 minutes to get all your large titanite shards. Now once you finish this area up, head back to Andre, and congrats on your plus 9 weapon. As I'll show here, we're going to use our plus 9 S-Dock on Vort uh, to just steamroll him. In the event of the build I've picked, we do have a high Vigor build, uh, so we won't do as much damage as we would be doing had we put all these points into Dexterity or Strength or something like that, so we're still killing him pretty quick even though we have pretty much no stat investment uh, towards our S-Dock, save for a few points. So in this case, if you're going for the High Vigor build, I would really, really recommend you pick up the Fire Gem at the beginning as your starting gift, because that will give you some nice, uh, some nice base damage without the need of scaling. And that's it for today, folks. Thank you for watching, and enjoy steamrolling the game with your hard-earned plus 9 weapon. If you had any additional questions on the actual glitch for Killing the Dancer, even though we did illustrate it once again here, uh, you can check out this video below. I'll put a link in it there. And that's going to be all for today. Have a good one and take it easy.